Welcome to Down in the Hole. Down in the Hole is a thing we do down in my basement, although you can see today. I'm in the basement, he's not, because he's feeling under the weather, so he's at home, and we figured out a really janky way for him to still sit beside me, him being Jonathan, on the television. That's me. We'll do the remote Skype call, and maybe it'll work out. I think it will. We're not dumb. Well, I mean, you're not. I can't say so much for myself. But anyway, you're doing all right. We're talking. We're talking about the Batman. Today. Yeah. Oh. Oh, I was looking forward to this for so long since since they announced it was happening, and then I remember the day they announced that Robert Pattinson was was stepping into the role, and so many people were shitting on it, and I was like, "You're all stupid. This guy can act." Yeah. Because everybody just uh, sees him as the glittery vampire guy in Twilight movies, but he's been in uh, other films. Tons of stuff. He's really good. And he's really good. good. And I'm like, uh, I don't care, man. They hired him for a reason. Maybe he's good. And he was pretty good. He was amazing. The movie, yeah. the movie was awesome. Uh, yeah. What were your uh, like initial thoughts? Like first five, ten minutes of the movie, what were you, what were you thinking? I, I love the way it looked. I mean, that's everybody's, obviously, everybody's opinion. But even the way, like, they, even the way, like, his suit looked like it was stitched together. You know what I mean? Like, it looked handmade. Yeah. You know, like, the close-up of his mask, you could see, like, how the nose was all, like, stitched together. and It's not, like, perfect. You know? They saw what Marvel was doing and, like... Flipped the script. <laughs> yeah, they said, nope. Completely. <laughs> we like we don't want to do that. Yeah, they made it into like a really dirty, like kind of like what Nolan did too, like just like a good crime drama. Yeah, I would say this was even dirtier and grittier than what Nolan did. Yeah. Nolan did an amazing job with his trilogy. And then this thing was just like they knew what they wanted to do. They hit a home run. And everything always everything felt uncomfortable, you know, like wet boots raining all the time like the first time you see batman he's like drenched <laughs> you know he doesn't yeah. even look comfortable he doesn't look like he wants to even be there but yeah. I, I loved how they set that up in the initial obviously if anybody's watching this and you haven't seen it yet there's a lot we're probably we don't care there's going to be spoilers so spoiler alert uh, yeah um, it's we can't we're not that. saying anything that other people on the internet have already said but i loved how they didn't even show him for the first little while. They just showed yeah. that shirt. Yeah. They just, yeah, that's um, badass. yeah, that's cool. They just like everybody sort of like the, the, all the, all the criminals were like, they were looking into the hallway and like, you know, the cameras doing a slow push. It's just dark, nothing there, you know? Then it goes to the other side of Gotham City, and there's another bunch of hooligans doing some stupid shit, burning something, whatever. And they all start running because they see the, then they see the bat signal, and then they're looking down another street that's dark, and they're just doing a slow. And there's nothing there, you know. If they were setting up that fear of, and it, it and it, they, it was like, I don't want to say they overdid it, but like, can you? It was like on purpose. Sorry, can you move your camera up? Up. Yeah. Like, uh, your he your in, head's being chopped. I just noticed. I just oh. looked over for the first. How professional. Four minutes into the video, and I finally looked over at the video screen, and that's perfect. Thank you, Sire. Hey, you can see my bad signal here. That's here. it. Yeah, that works better. Yep. Perfect. Um, but, yeah, just like the, you could tell that they were scared of him, you know. Yeah. But he's only one guy, so he can only go one place at a time. So it was like, who's going to get hit, you know. And now yeah, it was great. I loved the reveal. I loved his Batman. I loved his Batman voice. Like when you go back and you watch like the Nolan, like I'm like, man, Christian Bale's Batman voice is kind of annoying. Yeah. And uh, yeah, like it's, it, it's, it's a great movie and I, I love it. But like when you watch this one and then you go back and you see, see clips from like the Batman begins and stuff, you're just talking like this the whole time. I mean, yeah, Robert Pattinson didn't do that. <laughs> he just talked. No, he just he sounded like he had a mask covering half his face. Like, yeah, and he didn't even his... talk a lot as Batman. You know, I remember that scene where he 
he he crosses like the police line to investigate that crime scene and yeah. the cop on duty is like hey you can't go in there and he just he just he just looks at him <laughs> and the cop's like okay what and then like he's looking man you can't you can't do that and batman just looks at him <laughs> like i i don't care dude like i'm fucking doing it <laughs> and then he finds that tool and the guy's like oh yeah fucking carpet puller or whatever and he's like pardon like batman didn't know that you know so then he got like you know buddy they ended up helping each other in the end but like the dude said like like batman himself like doesn't even really talk that much so it's like you don't need to really disguise your voice if you don't say a lot of words no uh and like, if you ever watch a movie like well when you look into like the, the newer like the rise of the planet of the apes the war for the planet of the apes War for the Planet of the Apes, man, it was one of the best movies I've watched that had next to no dialogue whatsoever. No. Like, what can be said with body language and, like, facial cues? And Have you seen WALL-E? Yeah. Same thing? No talking yeah. in that movie ever until the end when they meet the humans or whatever. Yeah, it's, it's, it's incredible. Like, when done well. Or even that old, like, remember that old claymation show, Pingu? Like it was, it oh, was, yeah. it was French or something. It was a different language. It was something like fucking PBS or some shit here. But you didn't need to know what he was saying because they tell the story just with. Like the first time I saw Avatar, on um, Blu-ray or DVD or whatever it was, yeah. um, I forgot to turn subtitles on. I had no idea. But I watched the whole movie. Didn't have a problem. Then I watched it again a second time, and I'm like, there's subtitles? I'm like, well, yeah, how the fuck do you understand what they're saying? They're all speaking blue lady language. I'm like, yeah, I didn't. Man. I watched it the first time. I totally knew it was happening without subtitles on, not even realizing, because they were telling the story so good, you didn't need to know. You knew what they were talking That's, about without even knowing the language. This is why I personally love professional wrestling. Yeah. You can tell an entire fucking story with inside that squared circle yeah. inside the ring. Yeah. You don't need to say a word. You can tell you can tell a story. It is. It's like a hidden um, it's like a hidden language. You know. Yeah. And like, yeah, they know how to tell a story by acting it out. And the and yeah, the Batman, and like you can't years. even see half the stuff in that movie because of how they did the cinematography, making it look, you know, wet and dirty and out of focus. And and that's how it should. Like it 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 it's Fuck man, I can't. Like you can't even. I just want to. I'll watch it again probably going to bed. Yeah, yeah. It's three hours. Right. But it doesn't feel like it's three hours. Did you see the scene that they cut out of it? No, I haven't watched that yet. So there's a six minute scene that got deleted from the movie, um, where Batman goes to Arkham Asylum to talk to the Joker, who we do see in the movie at the end. Yeah. As he's trying to cheer up the Riddler. But, like, there's a scene where Batman goes to the Joker. And, you know, they, they reference that, you know, oh, hey. Because they've clearly dealt with each other already. Because Joker knows who he is and everything that happened, whatever the hell happened between them before to land him in there. Yeah. But it's like a, it's a really cool scene. And Batman's asking for help. Like, what would you do, man? Like, he's, he's asking him, like... I can't, you know, I can't figure this guy out. And he goes to the Joker to fucking get some tips. And I'm thinking, like, wh I wonder why they cut it out. It's a good, it's a six or seven minute scene. And it probably got cut from in the middle somewhere. Like act yeah, two from, kind of thing. From what I read was that was to make the scene at the end more powerful. Possibly, Matt yeah. Reeves, Matt Reeves didn't want to have like two big visits to Arkham. Yeah, in the movie, you know what I mean. Like he wanted to really emphasize the one, and it's we don't need. I mean, I love like the whole universe with Batman, but I don't say save that save that Joker stuff for the next one. I was happy with the little tease we got at the very end. Yeah. I thought that was wicked. And we've seen so much of the Joker, like you don't need to put him in there. Because I mean, Paul Dano playing the Riddler, the guy is absolutely fucking fantastic. Oh, man, I, oh my God, unreal. And Unreal. Yeah, the, what, what he did with the Riddler character was really cool. Because I mean, he went like, 
they even said with those cell phone scenes where Man, he, can I just say something that might piss a lot of people off? <laughs> yes, please. I think Paul Dano's Riddler was better than Heath Ledger's Joker. Yeah. Heath Ledger's Joker it's, was fucking good though, dude. He was, oh, he was fucking great, but there's something so realistically sinister about the Riddler. Yeah. Yeah, he's, um, and like, Daniel, Daniel's he, so good. Every time I've seen him in a movie, he's just amazing. And nobody really knew his name, I don't think, until now. Um, like, when he was in Prisoners. Like, he's in a lot of good movies. And he always plays that little bit of an unstable guy. He's really good me, at that. He's so, so good as the Riddler. Borderline psycho. And then they, they put him in there, and I'm thinking, cool. Because he doesn't even, like, um, a lot of takes with him on the cell phone and all that because yeah. like, he would just not stop doing it and he just kept doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it until he got it right like he really wanted it to land a certain way and he just kept on firing those things off and like just let the guy fucking go you know and then what's in the movie is what he wanted and then, like you hire an actor for that exact reason to just go to where they need to go i guess so the way i look at it is like Yes, Heath Ledger's Joker was fucking incredible. I will never, ever argue that with anybody. But with Ledger's Joker, I was thinking the whole time, you know, like, this guy's pretty fucking, he's pretty badass, like a pretty badass Joker. Like, Yeah. What kind of cool shit's he going to blow up? And the typical, you know, Joker stuff. Anarchy, right? fire, yeah. you know, um, trapping uh, 400 people on a boat, rigging it up with, or two boats <laughs> one of them is yeah. going to explode that man which one are you going to like who do you save like all these you know fucking crazy decisions and stuff but 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 paul paul dano's joe or riddler sorry had me gripped every time that character was on screen speaking yeah because he didn't um where, like, I think what you're trying to say, too, yeah, like, where the Joker is all, like, the physical, you know, like, where he burns that stack of money and all this kind of shit, blowing up the boats. and this Or having was all Harvey mental. Dent in one building and, and um, what's-her-face in the other one, Maggie Gyllenhaal, I can't remember the name of her character. Um, you know, like, catastrophic shit's going to happen, where, where Dano Rachel. is just, yeah, where, where, where Dano is just, like... He, yeah, he he's be the guy living next door. He's just boiling, you know. His blood's boiling, and he's not rallying ten thousand people. And he's got his little crew of guys at the end. Um, but yeah, it, it's nothing very. Yeah, he just see, yeah, like you say, he's more scary. Yeah, it's more I like think the, he could, what we're trying he could to be say. the guy living next door. Yeah, yeah, he's a normal dude. They catch him in the diner. He just sits in the diner. He's having a coffee. And that's, I think that's what we're kind of, uh, what I'm trying to say anyway, is like, yeah, he was almost like more like sinister, scary because he was so low key, more creepy, way more creepy. And the Joker was fun to watch because he's so fucking psycho, you know, getting beat up by Batman in the interrogation room, laughing every punch he takes. But then, you know, Dano, Dano's Riddler, it's just... You're like man, Mind this guy games, is man. fucking twisted. Like this yeah. dude's head is broken. <laughs> and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah, he was really good. And oh, what about the Batmobile reveal? Oh man, can we just talk about before, even before the Batmobile reveal, how there are scenes where you just see certain parts of the car. Yeah, because there like is a the, scene where he's in the garage, and you see it up on a hoist. Like, he's but, got the wheels off it or something. I can't remember what that is. But you see it. It's just there's got a tarp kind of half over it. Yeah. But then there's, like, another scene, and they'll do, like, a little quick flash by, and it's the motor. Yeah. So, like, you see the different parts of the car separately, and then you see them together, and, well, we felt them together. Yeah. That was the sickest thing ever in the theater, man. When that... Oh. When that parking lot scene kind of falls apart and then, you know, penguins jumping in the car and when that thing fucking fires up, cause we saw it in IMAX. 
Yeah. So, and it's not like an IMAX movie, like 3D or anything, but it's like that sound design, man. The whole through the whole movie too. The sound design through the whole movie was phenomenal. But that the the way that that car sounded, I I was holding my breath for that whole fucking scene. And you feel it in your chest, yeah. Like, and I'm like, it's like watching this car chase, and even how they shot the car chase. There's no crazy drone swooping in. Fast and the Furious shit jumping off fucking mountains. Like the the, no, the cameras are the, if the camera isn't tied to the car, it's being held by a cameraman standing there watching it drive by. Yeah. And it, it, it just felt like you were sitting in the car and then when you're sitting in the car, it's just bolted to the roll cage or on the fender. Like everything that happened in that car chase, I found it was the whole movie feels claustrophobic almost. It feels like you're just meant to just stand next to all this shit. Because that's how they shot it. Like, there's a couple big epic shots, obviously, when he jumps off the building and stuff. But like, it's most of it's tied pretty tight. So that's why I think why that car chase was so. The car chase was like, and when have you ever seen a car chase like that in the dark in the rain? That's dangerous. That's dangerous to film that shit. I was watching another YouTube review and they brought that up. They're like, the reason it was like so impactful too is because it's fucking wet and it's dark. Like that's a big risk filming that a scene like that in the rain, yeah. Because the, <laughs> the whole movie it's raining, you know, and then the fire yeah. and the contrast with the rain, like it's just it just looks beautiful. Yeah, it uh, it fits with what I was reading too. Matt Reeves' whole idea for this movie was what is what if Bruce Wayne was Kurt Cobain. Or sorry, what if Kurt Cobain was Bruce Wayne? So they used something in the way by Nirvana the whole way through the movie. That explains and that. Yeah. Yeah. So which is I love how they did that. Like you hear that the actual song, like at the beginning, towards the beginning and at the end of the movie, but you hear it at, as the score. Yeah, there's pianos like and violins and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And it's all to that song. There's like an orchestra just, covering it. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. It it's like Every to me, just every bit of that movie fit together perfectly. You know that song too. Um, Something in the way. I didn't know this. Two chords. That's it. I could, I, I could see that. I'll check that. So out. now I need to learn that song because all I need to learn is two chords. <laughs> and um, you don't have to play them very fast either. No. <laughs> and apparently, he recorded that song lying down. No, yeah, uh, like um, they made him the producer, whoever produced the record. I, I, I remember hearing it somewhere where he he lied down because it sounds because again the, the way, way the song is, um, it just adds a better feeling to the song. But yeah, like I loved how Batman always had the eye makeup on too. Yeah, you know, and people showed that contrast to that spot in Batman Returns when he when Keaton's going to pull the cowl off in front of Catwoman. Yeah. And then it's like they've they're focused on him and he's got it all on. And then they focus on her. And then it comes back to him and he's still got it all on, but now he has no eye makeup. Under the mask, he, his eye makeup's gone. So when he pulls the mask off, he's just Michael Keaton. I'm like, I never noticed that before, but it's so fucking weird. Because he's got <laughs> yeah. the eye makeup and he's like, ah, blah, blah. and then Michelle Pfeiffer, and then back to him, still in a Batman costume, but no eye makeup. So when he rips the thing off, he doesn't look like a weirdo, I guess. So then somebody on the internet went back to all the Batman movies, and every time you see him without his cowl on, they put the eye makeup in, and it doesn't look weird. It looked great. Like that scene, I'm like, oh, he's got yeah. the Robert Pattinson fucking eye shadow. And it looked fine. And it's all like running, like because yeah. the rain and shit. It's all and it oh, looked yeah. fine. I'm like, who knew that that would actually look cool? Because that was cool too when he would go out and scout without his costume on yeah. or his gear. He was just like in a hoodie and he had a scarf across his face, but he still had the eye makeup on. So we knew we were following Batman. So well done. just part of his cat so, burglar uniform, right? But yeah. Yeah, I mean, I can't. Uh, I'm, I'm curious to see the director's cut because I'm wondering where they're going to put that Joker scene. Uh, I'm. Well, I just. I want to see a four-hour version of this movie. So bring it on. 
Yeah. I hope he's got a ton of extra shit for it. I would imagine. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm saying I want to see the director's cut to see where they where, where that Joker scene was cut from. But yeah, like you said, they've probably still got another half an hour of shit they pulled out of somewhere. Yeah. But oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I love the. Yeah, I don't know, man. Just that whole fucking movie. I I, I, was I gotta watch incredible. it again. Like, um, um, uh, John Turturro in there. Like, was he oh, Falcone? Yeah, yeah. Like, so good, man. Great, man. Um, Kravitz, she was great as Catwoman. Yeah, she was. Um, and I really one thing I appreciate too is they kept the lovey when you when you consider it as a three hour movie. They really kept the lovey dovey shit to a minimum. It was perfect. Like when good. you actually, when you actually look at the the amount of time on screen that it takes up, it's really very minimal. Yeah, and it kind of has to be there, especially like if you're going to further. Yeah, they're sort of. And I like Catwoman too. I like always like that tension between them because you know she's always the bad guy, but then she does help him out, and it's always that weird give and take. And then even yeah. the way that it ends where like she has to leave or he has to leave. I can't remember one or the other. And then he joins her on the motorcycle ride. I'm like, yeah. oh, that's kind of like lame. But then they get to the gates and then they split. So he, he just got her to the edge of the city and then they went their separate ways. I mean, he's not going to, he's not going to follow her. Right. And then they peeled off and I'm like, oh, that's kind of neat. So it's like, it's, yeah, they did it really good. You know, where it was like, he was just kind of saying goodbye or whatever. And then they just peeled off and went and do their own shit. Cause she had to bail, you know, yeah. it's like, yeah, if they were going to do another one like this, like in the style that this movie was done, that handheld right down in there, looks like a guerrilla filmmaker, you know, no fancy helicopter shots, none of that shit. Just right down in the action, crazy fucking car scenes, the way that the lenses looked and stuff. Like, I was watching the thing, too, of how they actually went. They used Arri Alexa cameras to film the movie, which everybody uses. They're fucking phenomenal cameras. Digital cameras. But then they actually detuned the lenses. That's wild. Because the focus, if you watch, if you've seen the movie, the focus is fucked up in every scene. And that's the look they wanted. Um what other franchise would you want to see in that style? Like if that director and cinematographer and director of photography all got together again. Cause I, I oh. cause I got a good one and mm. my wife is a gigantic fan of ghost Rider. Oh, and, I see what and, and the Nicholas cage ghost Rider movies were not that good. And I'm like, I said to Shelly, I'm like, fuck, if they made a fucking Ghost Rider movie look like that, would that, that would be perfect. Although yeah. that's a little bit more supernatural, the Ghost Rider character, where Batman, that's why this movie was good, because it was grounded in like reality almost, you could say. But just the way that that movie looked and stuff, I think it would really fit good in a Ghost Rider movie. Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Lord of the Rings. It's that movie's so epic. Yeah, but do it like that. You want to rub Vaseline on the lens and make it look gross. Yeah, make yeah. it look fucking nice. Or, Man, they gotta walk to Mordor. Like, come on. Yeah, yeah, it would be good. Like, that's, it's like the movie's already pretty dirty, but we want it make just, it dirtier. <laughs> funny, just make it make it rainy all the fucking time. Yeah, like I wonder. Yeah, like Ghost Rider, Lord of the Rings. See, they're making a Lord of the Rings show. Oh, I can't wait. But yeah, like, oh, I can't wait. there's other, like, even, um, fuck, like, even, like, another one of her favorite characters, too, Gambit. You know, he. Yeah, we never got he that. Never got, we never got a Gambit movie. So I'm like, fuck, make a fucking Gambit movie look like that Batman movie. Comic book shit, man. Make it look real. And Gambit, you know, he's got magical it's powers. Fucking... He can throw fucking cards and blow shit up with his fingers and stuff. But it's not too outrageous. No, I like so. Yeah, I'd like that'd be cool. But I, for me personally, I'm so sick with Lord of the Rings. Yeah, that new show. It'd be cool. That like new that. coming out. That should be a, a fun, a fun watch as well. But yeah, anyway, the Batman, the brand new one with Robert Pattinson, big fans. Oh yeah, 
And 100% 4K Blu-ray comes out May 24th, I believe. So I'm pre-ordering it and I'll have it that day. No way. Yeah, I can already, I mean, I can already stream it, but like I want the 4K Blu-ray. You need the physical disc. Yeah. I mean, streaming's cool, but you're never going to actually get that like full 100% fidelity of it like the actual disc is always better than streaming streaming is great and there's a lot of really top quality streaming uh services but there's another example actual 4k what's that thing no time to die is that the newest one yeah the 4k blu-ray for that that's the newest one that's his last his last hurrah they've already got that out on disc too eh yes they come quick yep yeah, because what? I mean, Batman's still in the theater. You can still go watch it, but you can also run it on HBO Max, and you're telling me in less than a month it's out on 4K Blu-ray. Yeah. So within three months of it being in the theater, it's already on disc. And it just makes me so happy. That's been <laughs> so cool. As, as a diehard Batman fan, like, just for those that haven't show blamed this earlier. Yeah, the tat. The uppercut, the classic uppercut, straight to the face. Yeah, that was, uh, that was, man, I was hung over when I got that tattoo. It was a long day. <laughs> yeah, oh, whatever, man. Long day. We'll just go get a, we'll just go get a tattoo. No big deal. <laughs> oh, they were having like a, fa- it was like a father. I think it was, I can't remember if it was my first kid just after she was born, but like this tattoo shop had a deal for Father's Day and it's like, all right, whatever. And then Flint sat in the chair, but I didn't realize I was going to be sitting there for like four five hours yeah yeah because that's not a small tattoo no and there's a lot of color and like shading and all that sort of shit and by the end of it man they were giving me beer in the tattoo shop just to (laughs) just to keep me level while i got the tattoo which obviously was not a smart thing to do but that's funny man i was so hungover jesus well at least it was a good tattoo anyway yeah, I love it, man. At least you didn't I wake up you. and get like, like, where the fuck did this Big Bird and Oscar the Grouch tattoo come from? At least he got something good. <laughs> yeah, no, that's Conroy's Batman knocking out Hamill's Joker. Yeah, the, the legends. And uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, if you haven't seen the new Batman movie, I'm, I'm sure there's people who hate it. But um, <clears throat> they're probably diehard Marvel fans. Even then, who cares? Like I've, I've seen yeah. reviews and they're kind of funny as to why people don't like it, but it's like, you don't even like it does. Pe- people don't even have to be into Batman to enjoy this kind of a movie though. Not really. Like yeah. it's the, the kind it's, of like the Nolan trilogy was the same thing. If you like a crime drama, then this guy just wears a Batman suit. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they made it like my parents aren't even massive uh batman fans but they they liked all the nolan movies and i said you gotta go see this new one and they fucking loved it <laughs> you know yeah, i'm it's, like man it's just this is good i love the nolan ones too like all of them i mean the dark knight rises like i enjoyed it too i i would have enjoyed a little bit more than like f- four and a half fucking minutes of batman in the whole movie <laughs> yeah yeah it's like they took the the Beetlejuice idea at like the extreme, how you only see Michael Keaton in Beetlejuice for like a total of maybe 11 minutes. I think it is in that whole movie. Yeah. And dark Knight rises was the Bane one. Right? Like that was the third one. Yeah. The, the, Bane, the Bane one. Yeah. yeah. And, and it, most of the movie he's trying to fucking get into prison. Like you don't see Batman through most of that movie. Yeah. You see Christian Bale, but he's not, you know, in a, in a, in a Batmobile or anything. Yeah, because he gets his back broken, which I love that they they brought that from the comics. Like I thought that was really sweet. And then the, the twist just, that Talia was there the whole time was was cool. Yeah. I was yeah. like, oh shit, because I played the video games from uh, Rocksteady. Yeah, and so I knew games. all the characters, eh? And I'm like, I'm at the I'm like, holy fuck, she's Talia. You know, I remember that moment yeah. where I'm like, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> and then knowing that she's in cahoots with Bane, when when that whole thing came around, I'm like, holy fuck, she's Talia al Ghul. Fucking blindsided with that one. That was a cool yeah. twist. But, yeah. But the Batman. Watch it, folks. You'll enjoy I it think, a lot. Yeah. It's really good. Yeah. And I mean, like I said, we're not posting this video like because nobody else has. I think every, all the reviews I've watched, um, everybody's big fans of this thing. And everybody in it was great. Colin Farrell, 
as as the penguin. Like you can't even. The amount of people that you would say, "Hey, that's Colin Farrell," they'd be like, "Fuck you." Yeah, it's like Tom Cruise in Tropic Thunder. It's like, why do I just like I look familiar? Like <laughs> Colin Farrell doesn't even look familiar in this. No. Like you don't even with all the body makeup they put on him and the the accent he's doing, like it's just he's got the he's got like the Brooklyn accent or whatever the fucking New York accent, and you'd be like, I wouldn't even know it was him because he's like a Scottish guy. Yeah, and it's Irish. Uh, is he Irish? Whoops. Yeah. Sorry, Ben Henderson, if you're watching this. <laughs> um, but yeah, he um, because yeah, he has such a hardcore like Irish accent in some movies. Um, Hold on, I'm gonna look this up. But he's such a great yeah. actor because he can turn it off and and do that. And you're like, yeah, man, that's Colin Farrell. Like, no, 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 it's not. Yeah, it fucking is. They put a different head on him. All the makeup they would have had to put around his face, and you, you, you still can't really see him. Like, I'm looking hard, and I'm like, yeah, I guess I can see him. But. Castle Knock, Ireland. Okay. That's where he is from. There you go. He's Irish. I, <clears throat> I guess what they were... He'd walk in, I, I don't know if it was like a coffee shop or like a fast food joint, but I guess he would like test that penguin outfit and like nobody had a clue. Oh, he went out in public with the with the gear yeah. on. Yeah. Oh shit, yeah. Walking nobody. around as Colin Farrell in a penguin in a costume and everybody just sees a dude in a trench coat. Yeah. <laughs> no, nobody has a that's clue. cool as shit, man. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, drink of water. Hey, man, half an hour we've been talking about the Batman. That's pretty good. Hell yeah, man. I could talk about Batman. All yeah. Time. At the end of the day, I think they nailed it. All the characters yeah. are great. The casting was fantastic. The director was off his rocker. The audio. Audio sound design and soundtrack. Yeah. The score. Yeah, the audio. Is like, <laughs> you know, if you, if you fuck up the audio, you fuck up your whole movie. And they didn't fuck anything up. The movie sounded amazing. Yeah. It sounded amazing. It looked amazing. Yeah. Like it looked like shit, which was amazing. Like, <laughs> yeah, they, I know that doesn't make sense to a lot of people, sense. but like you said, it looks it like was, shit, but you said it looks good. They they that's, knew that's, that's the whole point. Yeah, they knew they basically knew how to make it look like a graphic novel. Yeah, because that's exactly yeah. what it looks like, like a film and, noir yeah. graphic novel. And yeah, I can't and I can't overstate how good Robert Pattinson was in this movie. Yeah, I liked how he was kind of like he just wanted to be a loner like he wanted to save his city and just be nocturnal and fight crime and they're like mr wayne you really should attend to benefit and he's like fuck you i'm building yeah, I'm building like, a different like i'm putting bat wing batarangs in my fucking suit god damn it <laughs> yeah like he doesn't want to fucking deal with people he's still trying to deal with the whole aftermath of his parents dying yeah. which is another thing i loved about that movie was they didn't waste 45 minutes into the fucking origin story of Batman. No. Like, I don't need to see that for the 25th time. Like, they did it perfect. Like, every Spider Man reboot, we get to see him get bit by a spire. How about we just jump right into, like, like uh, fucking Sandman or some shit? Like, we already know yeah. how he became what he was. Yeah. You know, we don't need, and if we do see his parents get killed like in a dream sequence i think he had some flashbacks in that movie from when he was when like, he was a kid but you don't need to like we already know but in in so many other batman stories we've seen or read like thomas wayne was like a god yeah like you know what i mean but like in the batman like thomas wayne was like he was a good dude but like he was also kind of a piece of shit yeah so like that kind of tears Bruce a little bit, like, you know, he'll lean one way or the yeah. other, good, bad, like a little he's, bit corrupt. Yeah, but but it's because like he's learning that like every everything and everybody's corrupt. It's just yeah. And he's trying to save the city all by himself and it it's probably making him pretty angry. <laughs> and it's yeah, definitely absolutely. tired him out. And uh, like Elf I forgot too, Andy Circus is Alfred. I always love that guy, man. Oh, me too. And I mean, fuck, you can go Gollum. So good, yeah. Gollum, Caesar, um, oh, so Snoke, Caesar. Snoke. <laughs> yeah. Um, Hell yeah. Yeah. He was also what was it? He, he was in the Black Panther too. Yeah, he was like um, a he was like a dickhead fucking laboratory guy. Like he was like a, mer a mercenary. He, oh yeah, he was. Kind of yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was cool. He looked really cool in the Black Panther. 
Yeah, he looked yeah, badass. His, he was jacked. He, he was, was like, a piece of shit in that movie. It's like, and that, that was Gollum? Like, can we give this guy all of the Oscars? Yeah, he's always good. Um, I like more now that he's um, actually playing himself more. Like, we actually get to see him. Um, he was um, in Peter Jackson's uh, King Kong movie. Uh, I don't even, to be honest with you, I don't think I've ever watched Me that. Neither. You know who he is? Okay. King Kong. He plays the monkey. No. So if you yeah, like if you need a guy to play a monkey, apparently it's <laughs> Andy Circus. But I didn't know that you one know. until like a couple weeks ago. I'm like, I don't know you fuck King Kong. But he's just so good That's at like Im- imitating the the apes, eh? So Planet of the Apes, Gollum, all those characters he plays, right? And then but to see him oh. actually play himself as a human being is always cool. Yeah, he's yeah. You're like you said, so good as Alfred. Yeah, like who are you gonna so cast? Good. I mean, like, oh, Michael Caine was so fucking good. He was good. I really love. I, I couldn't tell you the name. Oh, the guy the, from the, the original Gotham. All of them? No, I mean obviously him too. But I mean that's more in the. I can see those old Batman movies. I compare more to like the Marvel movies. You know what yeah. I mean? The old, the old comic booky ones. I mean, the Alfred. Have you ever seen the TV show Gotham? Yes. The Alfred from the TV show. Yeah. How he was? He was. He was badass, like ex-military. Like, yeah. Yeah, wasn't like, he like an old British guy? But like, he was a lot more hardcore. Yeah, yeah. I, I just I like I like seeing that connect because you know that there's that sort of fatherly connection between Alfred and Bruce, but in the old, like Keaton, uh, Kilmer, Clooney, like you, you don't really get that. No, like he's, he's just the butler. The butler he's, Alfred, yeah. he's more like a, who knows what's going on. Yeah. He's more just playing like the nanny, but yeah, they don't really look or, to him as like for, I guess they kind of like the hospital. for advice and stuff. Yeah. But I know what you're saying. There's more, there's not really, you don't really feel that connection in those movies for some reason. No, man, that hospital scene where, like, oh, where Batman Alfred's talking, where he looks up through the skylight and sees the bat signal, and then he looks. But that whole <laughs> that whole scene, that whole hospital scene, man, just like grabs you by the mm-hmm. heart. Like, you feel how close Alfred and Bruce are, and how much Bruce cares about Alfred. Like, yeah, it's so powerful, and like. There were a couple times in the Nolan movies where you got that, but it was in, in, in certain scenes, you know what I mean? Like, whereas in the Batman, like you, you kind of felt that throughout the whole movie. Yeah. Like you, you just he felt like he let him down. Know. Like when he got blown up, you know, and it's like, he was too late and he felt really bad. And he was, he was there at the hospital with them. Yeah. It, it, it felt more, more real. Yeah, it's just a better relationship to see between those guys. I thought he died. I thought they killed him. And I'm like, they can't. Yeah. They can't kill Alfred, though, right? I'm like, what the hell? And they show him in the yeah. hospital. I'm like, okay, good. Thank God. <laughs> like, don't don't, yeah. don't oh, kill yeah. Andy Circus, you dickhead. <laughs> but uh, or even that that police station escape. That was another scene I meant to talk about too. That was genius because man. genius. He, I love like when he got to the roof and he's running to the ledge and then he doesn't jump. And I'm like, what the fuck? Batman always jumps into big wing guy and just like flies <laughs> off. But then he's like, he's a changing, he's unzipping his suit and changing himself into a squirrel suit. I'm like, Oh shit. And then he jumps off, you know, and, and floats down and pulls the shoe. So just so much more realistic. Yeah, because I'm just so we're all just so used to seeing him just run off a building and just snap into a wingsuit, um, yeah. and <clears throat> where the cape just turns rigid and they, he can just fly, which would have been fine. But when that didn't happen, I'm like, he's not afraid of heights, is he? Because he stopped. And the camera spins around. They show him on doing zippers and stuff. I'm like, oh fuck, it's a squirrel suit. And then when he yeah, lands, man, he see. fucked up the landing. <laughs> yeah. The parachute so realistic like a too. Light and he almost fucking died. Like to me, it's just it's a Batman movie to get a whole new generation of kids into Batman. Yeah, 
Like I could be that Batman. Like no kid's going to sit around thinking I could be Thor. No. Yeah. Like I could be a demigod. Like no, but like a kid will sit there thinking I could be Batman. Like I could put like that suit on. I could. Well, even like, you know, yeah, like, like when they got Keaton into it for me, cause I would have been like eight when that movie came out. It was great. Batman Returns, oh, yeah, Batman are, yeah. and Batman Returns are fantastic. And then Schumacher got a hold of it, and I didn't give a shit. And then Nolan. It took a long time, but when Nolan got it, you're like, see? He can, this, this shit can be good. Nolan was so good with scope. Yeah. Like, I loved the... In fact, like, he went to Japan and all that stuff. Yeah, and just the the way that a lot like a lot of it was shot, you see a lot of like outside top down, like oh, you just yeah. really got an idea for like how big this story really yeah. is. But then you sure. watch this movie, and you know he's like you know, Nolan's got the big IMAX cameras, and like you said, scope, you know the the towers and you know the cities and all everything's massive, huge, gigantic. Yeah. and then you you watch this movie, and everything's cramped. But but the whole time, the whole movie, I'm just like, yeah, it's th- like zoned it's right almost, in. Like I yeah, can't. It's like they wanted the opposite of what Nolan did, and they put you, like the viewer, like right down in there the whole time, and it never felt like you were flying around the city with a drone in a drone. Like it was, you're just yeah. walking next to Batman the whole time. And when and then when the movie slowed down too at parts when it was like focusing a lot on like Bruce Wayne's dialogue, like it's so well written that like, you don't even notice the movie slowed down. Cause you're just so focused on what he's yeah, saying. You're just following and how he's saying. Yeah. You're just following the, you're just following the story and it yeah. can't be a but million now, miles now the whole time, but yeah, when they slow her down, it's great. You know, and then they rig uh, Catwoman up with the fucking eye camera thing. And the, and the video it's sending looks like shit. <laughs> yeah, you can barely just, see it. Audio sounds like garbage. <laughs> but yeah, it was a um, great movie. We could talk about this fucking movie for two more hours, probably. But I should probably go. To yeah, I don't know. It's ten thirty. Yeah, <laughs> you're allowed to go to work tomorrow. Yeah. Do you want to do more of these? We, this is working. I, I'm surprised. I'm surprised that uh, we got it working. It took us a little while to get this the whole television set thing figured out. But um, we did one vertical and one landscape. Hor- plant, hor- ver- I'm going to use two different words. Vertical and horizontal. Let's, let's stay in the same vein. I flipped the TV one way and the other tonight. So I'll see what I like. I'll put it on my computer and That's- edit it and see which one I like better. And then we'll go back or forth and get it done once again. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah, buddy. I think that makes think sense that makes to me. Sense. Thank you so much, uh, everybody, for checking it out. My fucking nose is running, goddamn. <laughs> We've really enjoyed sitting down discussing this incredible piece of cinema. It was fantastic. Uh, please give us a like, share, subscribe. Uh, the subscriptions are cool. Just, just know that somebody cares. <laughs> yeah, uh, we we, do, we subscribe to our own stuff. What, what do you what? Uh, do you have any final thoughts for our viewers, my dude? Eating seeds is a pastime activity. I'm just quoting System of a Down songs, bro. I was listening to System of a Down all weekend. Eating seeds is a pastime activity. Dun, 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 dun. That's how I roll, man. Fair I enough. What? <laughs> I don't know what it's weird. I'm like, I just like get on an old band. I'm like, old bands, like. System of a Down is like classic rock now. Because that CD came out How in like 2001. How fucked up is that, man? Yeah, it's pretty crazy. But anyway, keep your stick on the ice. Thanks for watching Down on a Hole because you have been watching it. And it is this was a long one. This is about 40 minutes. But uh, we had to do it. And uh, it's a good test to see if this new setup works. Just in case we can't oh, yeah. get together, we can still get together. It's pretty cool. So hopefully these work out pretty good. And if you like it, like you said, thumbs up, subscribe, and commenting. Or don't. Whatever. Yeah. It's up to you. Oh, by the way, spoiler alert. <laughs> At the end of the video. 
And the 46th minute will tell everybody, hey, man, if you watch that whole thing, now you know what the whole movie's about. <laughs> <laughs> Ruining movies. That's what we do down in the hall. Bye, everybody. Peace. And word to your mom. We're here to drop bombs. Uh, no, I already did my. I already did my song quote. I already did it. It was eating seeds as a pastime activity. What are you watching it now? Twenty two. No, show twenty two. What's that say behind you? The show. It's the baseball game. MLB. The show twenty two. This is just like the menu. Screen. Yeah, if you thought he was watching ESPN. You're wrong. That's a video game. Yeah, it's been a video game playing the whole Very time. Easy. Anyway, we're, oh, we're leaving. Blog. Cut this off. Audio. <laughs> Cut it yeah, out. Thanks, Dave Coulier. <laughs> yeah, I know that guy, but I forgot Dave Thompson. Thanks for watching.